Okay, hello there, Alex Potts. You're a core maintainer for Drupal 8, and I just wanted to ask you what exactly is a core maintainer? So Drupal is an open source project, and it, it, it relies on the contributions of its uh, community to improve. Um, but it's not just that anything can uh, get into Drupal, but there's a process. So the process starts with, with uh, uh, a, a need being identified that Drupal needs to do something. Um, then people write a patch, and they submit a patch to an issue queue, and it gets discussed. At some point, the community feels that this is ready for inclusion into Drupal 8 core, and they mark that patch as reviewed and tested by the community. At that point, the core maintainer job is to look at that patch, make sure it uh, agrees with Drupal 8's coding standards, make sure it provides the functionality described, it solves the issue, um, and then commit it to Drupal 8 core. So we're, we're the, the gatekeepers and servants to the community, um, and, and the implementers, are, not the implementers, yeah. and, and the, 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 we're the gatekeepers and servants to the community to ensure that change is consistent and, and delivers on, on our dreams and hopes for, for the future of Drupal. Okay. So you're right at the end of the food chain, so to speak. Um, well, if there is a, if there is a food chain, um, we're certainly not at the top, which a lot of people think. Um, we, we we are, as I said, the servants. It's 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 we are the receivers of everyone's work, um, and, and we help them get their changes into support. But of course, at the same time, I don't just do that. I, I also write patches myself, and and part of the process. That's that's how you get involved. Okay. And how many of you are there? How many core maintainers are there in total? So different versions of Drupal have different numbers of maintainers. At the moment, Drupal 8 has five maintainers. There's Dries, there's Angie Byron, there's uh, Nathaniel Catchpole, there's Alex Pot and myself, and there's Jennifer Hogden, who's the, the documentation maintainer. Yeah. Right. So you must have been quite uh, honoured to have been invited to be a core maintainer. Yeah, the, the, I mean, I was, it was totally unexpected when, when, when Dries asked me um, uh, to, uh, to have a call with him about Drupal 8. I, I sat down, I prepared all my notes for what I thought might come up during, during the call. Um, and not in a million years did I ever dream that, um, that the, the first thing he would ask me is, that, would I like to be a, a, a core maintainer? Um, but fortunately, in my notes, I, I realized I didn't really know what he wanted to talk, me, uh, talk to me about. So actually, at the, the, I kind of rewrote them at the, at, at the end, and I, I wrote, listen, listen, listen. I reminded myself not to jump into <laughs> the next thing. And so I literally fell off my seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I can imagine, because being only one of five core maintainers in the whole world, and Drupal being a huge and growing project um, is quite it's quite quite a big deal isn't it so when when you first got involved in Drupal I'm sure you couldn't have imagined actually getting getting this far with it when was that when did you start so about, about six years ago I started working for a, a small company owned by Imperial College which is a university in Britain and we were building websites for um, EU science projects, big collaborative projects, um, and I was had to select a CMS for us to use because they, they'd typically been doing all their development with Dreamweaver, and we, we needed a CMS. And so I evaluated um, uh, Joomla, Drupal, and a couple of others, and and I chose Drupal because it, it really fitted with the, the the ethos of what a university is and what the EU is as well. You know, it's open. It's trying to include. Uh, uh, the work of lots of people together, and it, it just seemed to fit. So, so that was my beginning with Drupal. Mm -hmm. So, was it not so much technical issues that made you decide for Drupal? Was it a uh, lot to do with the, the personal aspects and the, it was and the, the value system behind it? Uh, it was it was a mixture of everything. It, 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 it had some of the, the the features that I was looking to build. It, it, I could create content types. I could add fields to those those content types and and, and list them in views. That was all. There. It was Drupal five at the time. It was my first first version of Drupal, um, and and it just it looked it looked good and and the community looked friendly and and people were building similar things at the time with Drupal. So. Yeah. It was and a natural fit. You've gone on to build some pretty large-scale websites with Drupal as well, haven't you? Pretty much as big as they can be. Yeah, so um, in the last two years, I've been working with Capgemini, and we were responsible for moving the Royal Mail, which is Britain's, uh, Britain's postal service, to Drupal. And so they, they now run uh, a collection of Drupal sites, which process, well, since their inception, have processed over 20 million orders. They, we have uh, node tables with 24 million rows. So, so yeah, big Drupal and, and interesting and challenging Drupal. Um, and that's kind of how I got involved in Core, because I was building these, these big sites with Capgemini, and 
I realized that I didn't want to have some of the problems that I was having with deployment and you know the use of features to to, to release change in production. It just wasn't working for us. So I was like, I want to I want to be a part of fixing that in, in, in Drupal 8. And so I, I, I sought out uh, the, the configuration management uh, initiative when I was at DrupalCon Denver and I, and I sat down on a table with Greg Dunlap, who's the initiative lead, and I said, hey, I've got some ideas. And he said, mm, I've got some issues. How about you work on them? And so I started working on, on, on the issues um, on CMI and submitting patches to the, to the queue, as, as I described earlier, and, and you know, contributing to Core. Cool. Yeah, brilliant, good stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was really good to talk to you. I think I've uh, had answers to all of my questions and I'll let you get back because I know you've been in the coders' lounge coding away there and yeah. uh, talking to all the rest of the developers and stuff. Yeah, well, so, so there's some really exciting things happening this week. We hope to get um, Twig finally uh, into core in, in, in a way that all the TPLs are converted. We're, we're working on uh, uh, lots of issues. So if, if, if you're interested in contributing to Drupal, you know, go to drupal.org and, and seek out uh, the, the core mentoring hours and seek out sprints. There's, there's lots of activities all over the world about getting involved in Drupal. So just, just go to Drupal.org and, and have a search on how to contribute. It's, it's, it's a, you can go on an amazing journey. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks very much for your time. I'll let you get back. That was great. Thanks. Cool.